Hey everyone, Nick Dearbird is here teaching you financial modeling. Today, we're going to build out the salary portion of the dynamic salary retirement model in Python. So, we've been talking about this model uh, you know, a fair amount already. We built out the whole model in Excel, and now it's time to go do that in Python. So, just as a quick review of what's involved in this model, so we're looking at a model where the salaries are uh, determined by a cost of living raise that occurs every year, a uh, promotion that happens every number of years with a certain percentage raise, and of course an initial starting salary, and it grows through time. And then uh, the individual saves a certain portion of that each year, and that is going to uh, be invested at a certain interest rate to uh, build up the individual's wealth over time. And then uh, we check the wealth year by year uh, to determine once the individual has hit a certain goal of how much cash they want to retire. And that's how we determine how long it takes for them to retire. So as more quick recap, this is what the salary equation looks like. We start from an initial salary, and then we grow that at the cost of living raises. And we also grow that for the number of promotions at the promotion raise rate. And for the wealth, uh, it is taking uh, always whatever the prior wealth was and adding the investment return to it, and then taking the uh, cash saved in that year, uh, the salary times the savings rate, uh, to get the wealth for that given year. So let's go ahead and see what this looks like in Python. So uh, the full completed example of this uh, is there on the course site, uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and build it out in the this and the following videos so i stripped this down to just an initial uh basically template this is you know basically what you would get on any given project in the course as far as the python side where you know you have the basic inputs of the model already set up in a data class for you and you have you know the very start of a table of contents and a placeholder for a description and things like that. So, you know, certainly you would want to fill out a full description of what your model is doing, um, but we'll leave that for now uh, for the sake of time. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, just run, run everything in order just to start with. So I have everything defined. Um, so now I have this uh, model data which has all of my different variables attached to it. Um, now there's a couple um, things that you can do which are going to make your experience of building the model a little bit smoother and help you avoid some pitfalls. So one uh, trick that I like is I'm going to go ahead and assign uh, data to be model data, and now uh, we can use data instead of model data. Um, so why are we doing that? Uh, so it goes along with another pattern that I'm about to show you, where uh, you know ultimately we're trying to write functions, but it's not uh, necessarily as easy to go straight to writing functions. It adds additional structure. And so it can be just a little bit more challenging to work with, especially as a beginner. Um, and so what we can do is we can write out all the logic of the function just straight in the cell like this. And then we can take that and we can just put it into a function once it works. Um, and the way that we'll define our functions, we'll define them all to take data, uh, you know, data being an instance of model inputs and it'll work with data, not model data. And the reason we're doing that is so that we don't accidentally use this model data uh, without passing it to the function. If you use it in the function without passing it to the function, 
then it's going to be tied to this specific instance of the data and not any arbitrary data that we could pass to it. So we want our functions uh, to be able to just take an input and give an output. We don't want them to be you know, in the background using some different inputs that we didn't expect it to be using. So this you know, pattern of, of going to using data um, and using data everywhere Basically, at the end, you'll remove this data equals mod of data cell. And so then you'll just be left with functions that take data and you'll be passing model data to them. Um, and so they should still work and they should not be accessing the overall model data. So that should become more clear as we go to build all this out. But that's a quick overview of why I'm setting data equal to model data here. So the first portion of the model that we want to build out is the salaries portion. Uh, so I'm going to create a salaries header, and we already use you know the, the level one header for the overall model title. So I'm going to use the level two header for each of the sub models. So you know the sub models are going to be salaries, wealth, and retirement. Um, so we can go ahead and add salaries to our uh, table of contents so you can just you know copy the previous um, so that you're able to uh, work off that um, and here we can say determines the annual uh, salary based on cost of living raises and promotions and now when we click that it takes us right to the salaries section so, uh, you know, you'll see in the completed uh, model that I have a full description written out here of what's going on and it has the equation uh, and everything, uh, but we'll just leave that off for now just for the sake of time. Just go and reference the completed example to see a good example of the kind of description that we should see uh, for one of these sections. But let's just go ahead and go right to the code. Um, so we know that we want to be taking the uh, salary, uh, the initial salary, times one plus the cost of living return to the number of years, times one plus the promotion return to the number of promotions. So uh, how do we figure out the pieces for this? So we don't know off the bat how many promotions there have been at a given year. We know uh, how often those promotions are occurring here by default every five years uh, but we you know if, if the year is three if the year is seven ten whatever we don't immediately know how many promotions have occurred up until that point so we have to calculate that so I'm going to calculate that um, so you know first let me just say you know let's work with year seven year equals seven um, so let's say um you know year divided by uh the promotions every n years uh what do we get from that so uh year seven we've had 1.4 promotions that doesn't we're not quite the way we're there it'd be one promotion right we hit 10 that goes to two we hit 11 it's 2.2 uh up to 14 we're at 2.8 so really we want just the uh integer portion of this right we don't care about the decimal as soon as it uh, you know, goes up to the next integer, that's when we uh, recognize that there's been another promotion. So if we just take the integer portion of that, uh, then we will be left with what we want. Uh, you know, years 11 through 12, or 11 through 14, it's two promotions. As soon as we hit 15, we get to three promotions. So this is what we want. Um, and then, uh, we can go ahead and calculate, calculate the salary at the given year. So salary at year T is going to be uh, the starting salary, which is in the inputs, times 1 plus the cost of living raise. And we're going to take that to the power of the year. And then that's going to be times 1 plus the promotional raise uh, to the power of the number of promotions. Um, 
So then we see by year 15, we have 120,000 roughly at year one, 61,200, year two, 64, 62,000, uh, you know, starting off an starting salary of 6,000, 2% cost of living raise. So this all sounds correct. Uh, and year four, uh, just under 65, and then we hit year five and we get a big jump in the salary as we would expect coming along with the promotion. So it looks like everything is working correctly. Um, so now we have a piece of the model which works appropriately. Let's go ahead and make this logical step into a function. So uh, what we can do, you know, this year uh, is going to be an input to the function now. And also the data is going to be the other input to the function. So def, uh, you know, salary at year. Uh, and it's going to take the data and it's going to take the year. And then we just, uh, you know, highlight all that and press tab to shift it over. And then we're just going to add a return onto the uh, salary. And now we have a function which does what we were uh trying to do so now we can get rid of this year um, so at year four we see the same almost 65,000 year five we see the 76,000 um, and since we uh, used just whatever data is being passed to it and not the overall model data that means that you know you could potentially uh, you know construct you know other uh, data you know, say, uh, you know, we wanted the salary to start at 40,000 instead and pass that data into there. Um, then we can see that it's going to be based off of that new inputs. Whereas if you had used model data in all of these, and you may or may not have put an argument here for that, uh, then it's going to always use these values, which are defined up here, which makes your model significantly less flexible. So we have uh, our portion of the model that works, the, getting the salary at a given year. And you know, definitely take a look at the full uh, example. You would want to put a description of what it does in the doc string, and you want to describe what's going on in this section. Uh, but the other thing that I think is appropriate to complete out this section is uh, just showing how this works year over year. So we define the function. Now let's look at what it looks like, um, you know, over a range of years. So um, we're just going to go through six years, um, and with the zero-based indexing in Python, you know, the the i is always starting at zero, but we want our year to start from one. So we're just going to add one to the i to get the actual year, and then we're going to calculate the salary at that year, um, and. Um, here we're going to pass it the model data because all this is happening outside a function and we want this to still work after we remove this when we're done with the model. Um, and then we want to go ahead and print a nice formatted string, the salary at year. Uh, and then the year is, uh, and then you know, let's give it you know some commas in there uh, and zero decimal places so then we can run that and we see that we get the salary year over year and indeed see you know cost of living raises going up through year four and then we hit year five a promotion occurs and we see a larger jump in salary so it looks like everything is working appropriately um, so definitely look at the full complete example for all the description of everything but that's the basic logic involved so next time we will come back to build the wealth section of the model uh, and then in the following video build the retirement section to finish it up. So thanks for listening and see you next time.